everyone. Welcome to Kitchen Counter Abstract. I'm Blake. And last episode, I talked about color mixing basics. And I went over the kit that I have. I use a primary kit. And what I was showing you last week, what are the fewest amount of paint colors that I can have in my kit so that I can get the rainbow, whatever I want when I mix it. And I actually learned a lot from trying to teach that class. Today I'm mixing color on the fly. I'm going to be using a little bit more intuitive style. I think when I'm mixing color, when I'm painting, I'm not necessarily thinking about the technical part of it so much, but I am trying to say something. A lot of times people have asked me, what am I trying to say when I'm painting? And I'm like, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just painting abstraction. There's no message. I don't have a political bent. I don't know what you mean when you ask me that. I recently watched a documentary on Howard Hodgkin. He's an abstract painter and he often paints on frames and when I was looking at his art, it was really enlightening for me because it really changed my perspective on art and abstract art. He has a strong story about each of his pieces. They are emotional. He has a memory and a feeling and he titles the art to reflect that. That made me think a little bit about my titles and what am I doing? Am I painting something that means something to me or am I just putting colors down, colors and shapes? Am I painting designs? I was thinking about color and it's not that a specific color means anything to me, but what is the color I'm putting next to it? Why am I putting that color there? Why am I pushing a value? Why do I want something to stand out? Why do I want this composition to be a certain way? And I can't say that I understand why I want it to be that way, but I am definitely telling a story here. There's a message coming through that's my voice and I'm using color and texture and shape to do that. And so that was really interesting for me and enlightening to realize that I, I do actually have something to say. This piece right here, I was trying to say through my colors that I want, um, I want an interesting composition and I want, I want to see brush strokes because I like that loose painterly look. Well, I don't know if a lot of people will think it's beautiful the way that I think it's beautiful. When I mix this blue, and I put it next to this yellow, I'm trying to say something. Do you know what I mean? When I posted this one on Instagram and I don't know, not nobody really responded to it except for a few friends who get me. <laughs> what I'm saying to you, the person looking at my art is that I like this thing next to this thing. I like this light next to this dark. I want this texture here. And I'm making very conscientious decisions when I do this. And when you look at my art, you're receiving that message. And I can't say it's a literal message, but I realized from listening to Howard Hodgkin that he really has a strong message, a strong voice, and his stuff isn't literal. Today I'm painting this ab these abstracts and I'm making decisions as I put the paint colors down. Do I want to work on a grid? I often like working on a grid. I like to have the grid so I can break it. Last episode on color mixing, I talked about the six primaries that I use, which is blue, red, and yellow, and I use a warm and cool of each. So if you watch that, you can see I'll go into a little bit more detail. Titanium white, Titan buff, yellow ochre, phthalo turquoise, burnt sienna, raw umber, and it's nice to lay down some dark big shapes just to establish the composition.
I'm working on three pieces at once. I do like to rotate. It just keeps everything fresh. It also allows my layers to dry. When I start a painting, I don't necessarily think, oh, I'm going to do a red painting or a blue painting, but sometimes I will establish that base layer color. I'm just using some water to drip here. When I want to get a light color like a white, I don't always just use pure titanium white. I like to mix it with my other colors that I'm using in my palette. And I'm mixing some cerulean blue and some of the mother color blue. The mother color is very important just to create a visual harmony. And here I'm establishing some contrast as well as trying to figure out my composition. Re-establishing some grid. Like I said, I like to have that grid on there. The grid helps me work in thirds and you don't have to do a grid if you don't want to, if your shapes are more organic. The grid lines there don't always show up in the final piece but sometimes they do and they help establish a sort of order. You can see when I layer the magenta over the blue, it's creating a nice rich purple color. I've really been into these crank pens. I like the pops of fluorescent color. I just ordered some fluorescent pink from Dick Blick and uh, we'll see how that goes. This is just a cheap acrylic pen. These are water soluble. These Caran d'Ache Neocolor crayons are great. They're water soluble and they're just very juicy. I'm just dipping it in the water so that I can get that wet effect. You can also spray water onto the paper or the canvas before you draw on it. So I'm layering the titanium white in that color that I've already mixed. And you see now I'm adding some of the blue into the red and pink, and that creates a, a nice color harmony. Getting bold here, establishing some bold composition, and not trying to be too afraid about covering up something I've done before, but also being conscientious about what's underneath and just trying to see what I like and not being precious about it, but also being conscientious about keeping some of the layers that I think are nice. And a lot of times you have to kill your darlings, but I do try to pay attention to some of the things that I like, some of the layers. In that last episode about mixing color, I talk about darkening colors and not using black to do that. 
a lot of times I will mix raw umber and ultramarine blue to create a really nice, almost black effect. And I'm dipping into the other colors so that I create that harmony. I'm not using just pure white. I like to consistently reestablish lines. I find them visually interesting in a final piece. And here I'm killing a bunch of darlings for the benefit of the composition. Maybe I was killing too much of my darlings there and I used a card to scrape through so that I could see some of those layers underneath. More ultramarine blue and covering up some of that Pepto-Bismol pink that I wasn't too fond of. This brush is great. This is a calligraphy brush. I'll have it linked in the description below. Really lends itself to a loose painterly feel. That creates a lot of visual interest for me, that white against the dark. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have a painting that's all the same value, and this really helps me. I liked that raw umber that I established at the beginning, so pulling some of that forward. Again, I'm using raw umber to create a nice dark color without using black. I don't know if I use black at all in this painting. So this is the phthalo turquoise that I was raving about in the last episode. And when you mix this with raw umber, you also get a nice dark color. Just using a really light touch here. Now I'm slowing down a little bit because I can tell that I feel like I'm getting close to the final piece and I'm just reestablishing some squares and just slowing down, just trying to push values, not cover up too much of the stuff that I think is interesting and yet not being precious about it. Because after all, it is just acrylic paint on paper and I can do hundreds of these. I do at least five of these a day. So you can imagine I have a lot of these stacking up. I'm using a Derwent water soluble pencil here to establish some interesting line work again because I covered a lot of that up. This one needs some light. It's just mostly all dark, got a big dark shape in it. And I'm using a cadmium red here and some yellow and white and some of my mother colors, the mother colors, just to create that visual harmony. And I love the way this coral looks against the blue. And that was an example of how I was mixing color intuitively. I 
wasn't sure, but I had a feeling those two colors were going to work nicely together. The blue and the coral have a great color harmony. A light touch, a light touch with the brush. And one of the things I've learned recently is to lay some paint down and then leave it. Don't fuss with it too much because it will start to look overworked. And I realize sometimes that I'll go too far. And so what I've been learning to do is just really stop while I'm ahead. These are getting really close. This color reminds me of the glow, the green glow stickers. I don't love it, but when I put it against those coral and that purpley blue, I thought it worked really well. The tempera paint sticks are really fun. They add some nice bursts of fresh color and they layer really well. This is the Thalo turquoise again. And I just wanted to reestablish some of that turquoise because I thought it looked really pretty with the coral. Cerulean blue, I'm mixing it in my other colors. Oh, just, yep, I just did one little line there because I was trying to learn how to stop. Here I'm getting just a glazing effect by smearing it with the paper towel. This is a Posca pen. And that's just a, a skewer. I think I felt that that little corner there was a little noisy and I was really trying to push the contrast because that's what makes something visually interesting. But I also left a little peek of some of the detail behind it without covering it up completely. This is a piece of deli paper left over from the Kill em Minis episode that I did. It has a little Posca pen texture on it and a good thing to do when you're laying collage so it looks integrated is to draw over it or paint over it so it doesn't look like it's just stuck on there. Again, I'm just really slowing down and I have a light touch here. So whereas when I was starting, I was a little bit more extreme and putting down a lot of heavy paint. Here I'm using smaller brushes and a lighter touch. When you hold the paintbrush like this, you actually have more control than if you were to hold it closer to the tip of the brush. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but. I felt like that broke the harmony of the composition right there. So I'm moving it around a uh, great thing about that glue stick is you can just pull it up. I like this because it was subtle. Now I'm integrating this collage piece by painting a little bit over it. So it looks like it's part of the piece. It's not just stuck on there. We're almost done here. So 
So, and I was thinking that that collage piece didn't feel integrated enough into the painting. So I'm just layering. And I'm also establishing some dark, which I think is visually beautiful. If some of you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed that I've been trying to figure out how to present and sell these pieces that I do on paper without having to frame them behind a mat and glass. And I've been asking around and I've got some really great feedback from everyone, but I'm still looking for that thing, this, this thing that I want to accomplish. So the problem that I'm having is that a lot of these pieces of paper I'm doing are not standard sizes. So some of you have said, you know, you can mount them on canvases, pre-made boards, but those pre-made canvases and boards are at a set size. If the piece is too small, then it won't fit. Um, I want to be able to have irregular sizes that aren't just standard factory sizes. And I want to be able to have control over the size of my piece. This one, for example, what I did was I mounted it on a mat board. I would love to have a show where I have all of these pieces on paper and I mount them on a wall and I make them really accessible for people so that they're not necessarily in... Um, So you can show your art in these cellophane pouches and people can sort of flip through your art, but then they have to take the art home and they have to figure out how to mount it on their wall. So what I'm trying to figure out right now is how to get all of this art, this paper art, so that I can display it in a gallery so that people can not only see it, but they can take it home with them and they can hang it on their wall. I want a way to be able to have it off the wall a little bit, maybe like a quarter of an inch. It's not just slammed up against the wall like that. I don't want to have like a hook thing because sometimes it'll just hang in a weird way. And I want people to be able to take it home and just go stick a nail on their wall and have it come off with a little invention that I'm coming up with, with my brother-in-law, Stuart. So I will follow up with this. And uh, once we get a prototype going, I'll let you know what that is and we can discuss. What is that message? And I haven't quite figured it out. And I think it's probably best that I don't figure that out exactly. I think it's really nice to be on this journey and not know exactly where I'm going. I have this idea in my head that someday I'm just going to be able to just like whip out all these paintings. There's this, this idea in my mind that I'm like finally going to, it's going to click and I'm going to be able to make these big, awesome paintings and I'm going to love every one of them. And I know that's probably a little bit of a, a pipe dream. Are there painters out there that can do that? They can just, they, they get ready to paint and they know exactly what they're going to do and it will come out the way they want. And I thought how like, how, what a dream killer that would be to be able to just robotically go down and make the painting that you want and go, okay, it'd be like a factory, right? The whole idea of this is really the, the, the struggle and the journey and the not being there and not being able to accomplish the concepts that are going on in the back of my mind. I have visions of things that I want to do and I'm inspired by other painters, but the fact that I don't, maybe I don't have the ability yet or the medium is too difficult or I haven't figured out quite what I'm doing. That's really, that's actually really the interesting part of painting. <laughs>